Hello everybody and welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. Today we're joined by Mr. Richard Holden. Hello. And in this video we're going to show you how to do some pork ribs on a Traeger Pro 22. Talk us through how to prep these ribs. Really simple prep for ribs. You just have to remove the membrane. If you don't, it's going to go rubbery and it'll just be tough when you're eating it. So I've got two sheets of ribs here. One has already had the membrane removed. Yep. Sometimes the butcher will do this for you, but if, it, if they don't, then it's really simple. Just take the tip of a, of a butter knife or a, a, the top of a teaspoon and just go in, if I turn this round, just go in down one of the center ribs. And if you just prise that away from the rib, just lift it up ever so slightly. Just lift it up enough so that you can get one of your fingers under there and then work that through to the other side. Once you've got it all the way, once you've got through to the other side, hold the membrane in one hand, hold the sheet of ribs in your other hand and just pull and the whole thing will come off in your just hand. Just like that. Just like that. Some of the recipes out there will tell you to start at one end and uh, just peel a little bit back and then tear along. If you do that, sometimes you can end up taking half the membrane off and then you have to go back with a piece of kitchen paper to try makes and it a lot it harder. It. It makes it a lot harder because it's got a, it's quite slippery. So now that that prep's done, it's time for the marinade, time for the rub. So we're going to just help it stick a little bit with some French's American mustard. So if you just squeeze some of that on the ribs for me, I'll smooth that over. That's perfect. And then we're going to use one of the Angus and Oink rubs for this, aren't we? Yeah, one we haven't used yet. There but this go. is Mr. Rubber Rubber. I like the names on their rubs. Should I read out what it's good for? Go on. This one is good for pork, chicken, fish, shrimp, and of course, raccoon. Of course, raccoon, everybody yeah. gets that, don't they? Yeah. <clears throat> so, Ooh. mustard all the way across. These ribs have been out of the fridge for about 20 minutes, half yeah. an hour, just to come up to room temperature. Do you want me to start putting this on? And then if you sprinkle that on. And the rubs, this is a little bit different from a typical American um, rub, which are normally kind of a reddy color uh, from the paprika but basic component of a dry rub, salt and sugar. Uh, the salt will season and the sugar will start to, um, it will sweeten and it will also help to form that crust that we get after about two or three hours on the smoker. Uh, the rest of the ingredients, lots of things there. There's some fennel seed in there. I think there's yep. some, uh, they're around here. Got some- um, Black pepper, lemon celery powder, salt. Caraway seed. Yeah. Really good little rub. So these are ready to go on the, on the smoker now. If you wanted to let those sit for about half an hour and just let the seasoning start to soak in, yeah. you could do. If you want to put them straight on, you can also do that as well. Richard, let's take them over to our uh, Traeger that we've got already preheating over here. If you can lift the lid for me, yep. I'll pop these straight on. So this obviously has the big deflector plate in the center yep. for indirect. So I'm just going to pop them. We've got this set at 121. There we go. That goes in there. And of course, the fuel, the pellets, that gives us the heat and the smoke. Yep. So the smoke will come through at intervals as they're cooking. We're going to give those about two and a half, three hours. We're going to get a nice crust on the outside of those. Yep. Um, then at that point, roughly when they're around about 70, 75 degrees, we'll come back and we'll wrap those. We'll put a little bit of barbecue sauce on the top and we'll wrap them and just okay. finish the cooking process. Right, so. so we'll give them two, two and a half, three hours. Yeah. Uh, we've got some time to kill, so I suggest we go and find something else to do. Okay. And we'll come back then. Okay, we're back with the tray. Let's see how our ribs are getting on. Yeah. Ooh. Look at those. Nice, the, um, this is, ooh. Look at you. Easy, Tiger. This is the umami, isn't it? Umami, yeah. Umami. And what we are using on this one, we're gonna use, um, again, Angus and Oint, but this is a uh, voodoo mango. This is more of a hot sauce. Uh, we've just tried this, and it is a hot sauce. Which one? <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna start pouring this. I quite... think with the mango and the fennel seeds that's in, that's in, the, um, in the rub, it'll yeah. go quite nice. I think that's probably... <laughs> Uh, they, they're yours. <clears throat> I think that's a, a, a good, healthy amount on our ribs. Thank you very much. So we'll brush that on. Now, if, if, uh, if anybody's read recipes for um, cooking ribs and they get to the stage where it says to wrap them, um, the purpose of the wrapping is because we want these ribs to go up to 95 degrees so that it pulls away from the bone. We want it to hold together, but we want it to... Um, we want it to come away from the bone nice and cleanly, and we want it to have a really nice, tender mouthfeel. Um, this should be absolutely melt in the mouth, not fall off the bone, we want it to melt in the mouth. Um, it should hold onto the bone, and then when you bite into it, there should be a teeth mark, yep. and it melts in the mouth. So, um, <clears throat> back to the American recipe method, they will just wrap in foil. Their foil 
you could fix your car with it, it's so thick. If you pull it round a bone on the ribs, it won't tear. Our UK foil isn't quite as strong, so I kind of reinforce with the parchment. So just wrap this over. <clears throat> Keep that crust that's on the, um, that's with the rub intact. So we just fold those over, then bring the ends in. Keep it all nice and together. The, the moisture in the, in the sauce, in this, inside this parcel, it will steam and it will create a nice steamy atmosphere inside the, the little parcel that we're just creating here. And that will actually steam back into, into the pork ribs, which will help tenderize them. It will also keep them nice and juicy and succulent. And then the, the remaining components of the sauce will form a nice sticky glaze on the top of the ribs. Um, I will point out, he's done this a lot more than me. I'm a little bit OCD as well, so yeah. apologies. But if you wrap them, if you wrap them in a way that you can get back into them, because if you want to check these, I don't want to have to start getting more foil and re-wrapping things. So if we just wrap them in a way that we can get back into them really easily, it's not a problem. Okay. So they're ready to go. We'll just pop these straight back on. So we've given these, what was it, about three and a half, four hours? Yep. So they just go back on. We give them another hour and a half, two hours, and then we'll come back shortly and we'll show you how to make sure that they're at the right point and ready to eat. So we'll see you very soon. I think the ribs are done. Yeah, we had we gave them an hour and a half. Um, we checked them, and then we turned the Traeger off so that it cooled down and they were allowed to rest for a good half an hour, 45 minutes. On a day like today, turning the Traeger off and letting it letting the meat rest inside is actually not going to be too detrimental because it's quite cool. Yeah. So if we just take this back parcel off as well, close the lid. So let's have a look at these. And this is. This is kind of a, this is payoff time really, because you've, you've done all the work. You might have had to get up early to get them ready. Um, see the steam coming off there. See the bones just exposing here a little bit. We've got a, what's known as a bit of a shiner. It's not the end of the world. The way that you know your ribs are cooked, take your set of tongs, take a clean set of tongs, run in halfway along the length of one of the ribs, and then hold the ribs in place. And when you can pull it back, and can you see in there that bone is nice and clean where that meat's just pulled away? I want to nod my head very. The, ne the meat, the meat is just nicely holding onto the rib that I've still got hold of, but that is really good. So that's your half. This is my okay. half. Okay. Okay. And this, uh, this. Well, we'll check that one as well if you want. This one can be for the crew though. All right. So we'll check this. It's just there you go. So that just pulls away nicely as well. You got a bit of a smoke ring in there as well. I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the cameras, but. Got a nice bit of a smoke ring as well. If you wanted to do these ahead, you could actually at this stage open them up, let them cool down, rewrap them in the parchment and the foil, put them in the fridge and reheat on your Traeger at regular 180 roasting temperature. Um, so you could actually make them ahead and then serve the next day, or you could even freeze them at that point if you wanted to, to get them and then just defrost them, reheat and away you go. But we're not gonna do that today, we're gonna enjoy these. So <clears throat> while you're uh, if you want to tell the other people so if you want to see any more recipes like this, uh, visit our website, www.hayesgardenworld.co.uk. We are across all the social media platforms and there's more videos like this one on our YouTube channel. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank Good. you. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time.